Thanks for streaming in here on Bird Street 65 on Cowboys Week. Johnny Mac, Jody Mac, and we're lucky enough to have Olivia Rainier from the Inquiry join us. Uh, Olivia, the beatdown they took at the hands of the 49ers was something we haven't seen here in Philadelphia in a while. Now, the Eagles have lost games. They lost the Super Bowl. They haven't gotten their heads handed to them the way the, the 49ers did. How did they bounce back from that against Dallas this week? Um, it's a great question. That's exactly what they're trying to figure out right now. They play in old, yeah, they just got beat up pretty badly on Sunday. I don't think there's really any like secret, you know, what, what happened. I mean, just about in every facet of the game, they just got beat. Um, and so now they have no choice but to come in this week and, and learn from that and make correct their mistakes and look forward to this upcoming weekend against a very good opponent. Unfortunately for the Eagles, it doesn't get any easier from here with the Cowboys. They know that, especially going to their, uh, you know, their field uh, at AT AT&T, it's a tough place to play in. And it's, it's an even harder place to win in if you're an opposing team. So they've got pretty much everything to work on, everything to improve upon. The good news for the Eagles is that they've played this team once before this season They've beaten this team once before, and it really it wasn't that long ago. It was a month ago, so certainly things have changed since then. But they have have an opportunity to try to try to build on that as they get set for this week. Yeah, fourteen straight, uh, Olivia. The Cowboys at AT and T Stadium, five straight against the Eagles. They've won, so it is a really really difficult place to play. But you're going to have to beat good teams if the Eagles want to go where they want to go. Uh, Before I dive more into the Cowboys, uh, though, I do have to talk about the 49ers game because um, where would you be as far as, you know, this mentality of blush it, you know, it was a bad game. A lot of things factor into it. Um, It is uncharacteristic for the Eagles. If you're part of the coaching staff, do you do you say eh, it's an anomaly, or do you say we got some we got some bigger issues? And what are the big issues? Did you have coffee with the run the ball guy yesterday, mm-hmm. or is it the back seven on the defense? What what do they need to fix to get back to normal? Well, I think play? multiple things can be true at the same time. Um, I think obviously defensively that game was a, a massive concern. You allow six consecutive touchdowns on six consecutive drives. I don't think yeah, that's not a good. lot of teams are winning that game, uh, no matter how great that offense is, even if they scored. I mean, perhaps the momentum would have been – it would have been a lot different had the offense gone down and scored on those two drives instead of just settling for field goals. But, um, yeah, the defense, defense can't do that. Um, that said, they were playing against the 49ers, who are a team that are – Honestly, at, at this point, they seem to be built to dismantle this Eagles defense um, and exploit the middle of the field. So the Eagles need to try to figure out exactly, you know, this has been an issue for the better part of the season. How can they try to strengthen the middle of their defense? We saw them bring in Shaq Leonard. Um, I don't know if we can put too much, uh, <laughs> put too much as far as our expectations on him alone to solve all their problems um but i think getting back zach cunningham this upcoming week as well potentially could be uh beneficial that said i I don't think the cowboys are the same type of offense uh, by any means as the 49ers are the the personnel groupings that they use are a little bit different um so uh, certainly the defense the middle of the field is something that's an issue but I think also, you know, we saw quite a bit of uh, missed tackles in that game, um, blown assignments, uh, you know, just the the defensive coordinator, Sean Desai, even admitting that he didn't always put his guys in in the best positions to succeed. So the the blame does not solely fall on one person. Um, it, It deserves to be spread around a little bit defensively and Offensively, I think execution um, is, is something that I think we've talked about quite a bit throughout the season at times. Um, and I, that was, again, a factor um, on Sunday. So I think cleaning up in all of those areas, capitalizing, there was you know a lot of missed opportunities um, on offense, I think, for Hertz, especially in the passing game. And then, um, yeah, just figuring out a better, a better way to run the ball more efficiently, too. It's not just... Uh, 
the frequency with which the Eagles run the ball, it's the ability to run the ball well, and they, they did not. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to see more two-yard runs from, you know, DeAndre Swift or really whoever. Nobody had a great day on the ground. Um, so it's a, it's a matter of trying to run the ball efficiently, too, in order to open up the passing game. All right, Olivia, I'm going to give you a stat line, okay? Uh, quarterback stat line from this past weekend. 21 of 33 for 210 yards, one touchdown, one interception, a 79.1 quarterback a passer rating, excuse me, not quarterback rating, and he was sacked three times. Sounds a lot like Jalen Hurts, but it wasn't. It was Patrick Mahomes losing to the Green Bay Packers this week. Why didn't David Carr suggest that Patrick Mahomes should <laughs> David this Carr. upcoming week? Uh, it, who's is it Gabbard? Who's their backup these days? Kansas City. They're, uh, they're guy retired. Why can't I think of their yeah, backup? Yeah, Chad Henney retired. I think it yeah. is. Blaine yeah. I think it's Blaine Gabbard. Yeah, yeah. Blaine Gabbard to start for the Chiefs, Chiefs this week. Uh, <laughs> a, as per David Carr, did he do the Eagles a favor by saying something as foolish as he did from a motivational standpoint? I don't know. Nick Sirianni likes to say, you know, that you, you pick and choose what you use to motivate you. If I'm Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts, I, he doesn't strike me as the guy who's using a ton of external motivation to get himself going for this week. So to me, I, I don't really think that David Carr's words should mean anything to him if he wasn't motivated before to win this game. I don't think he would be in the position that he's in right now. Um, but, you know, if it's something, if it's a little added boost and they can use it in a, in a healthy, productive way, by all means, go for it. But at the end of the day, a lot of people, I mean, everyone has opinions. And I would say for them, the, the certain opinions should not matter. What we do really, what we say should not matter to them. Um you know, I, I would be I wouldn't understand why it, it would matter what David Carr says to Jalen Hurts. It's not for him. It's for it's for the people watching the show. I don't know. Um, yeah. But hey, whatever, whatever gets him going, whatever he needs to get do. That's his. Yeah. Business. Nick, Nick says if it works, use it. That's sort of what he says. Uh, so if it gives you personal motivation in a good way, yeah, use it. But I, w I would say this, David Carr aside, because that was goofy. Jalen Hurts was the favorite for MVP, loses one game, and all of a sudden we're talking about benching him for Marcus Mariota for whatever reason. It's absurd. But I do think, Olivia, that Jalen Hurts has reached this sacred cow status where if you criticize him, you're ostracized and set adrift. And I saw an alarming statistic, and I'm going to give you this one. Jalen's rookie season, which doesn't matter that much, but – uh, he didn't play that much. He, he It took him 3.39 seconds to throw the ball, which was the slowest in the NFL. 2021, uh, his first season as a starter, slowest in the NFL. 2022, big improvement. 14th, right middle of the pack. This year, second slowest. He's not getting the football out uh, as quickly. And we kind of saw it against the 49ers where he's, extending 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 and any slips bad things happen now jody and i were talking before you came on you go back and say the alameda is a chaos play and say look at him making a play i asked nick this yesterday he said it was a good question but he didn't really answer it it's like what's that balancing line getting the football out like brock purdy or extending plays and do you think he's shifted a little bit too to being too slow again. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly in the 49ers game, it certainly appeared that way. Absolutely. Um, but then there's other occasions where we see that he has this really strong ability to extend plays. And so you don't want to necessarily take that away from him either. So um, I, I don't know what I would do. I'm not, you know, I'm not, not going to sit here and tell Nick Sirianni how to handle that, but there is certainly a balancing act there of like, let's, we want to get the ball out quickly and I think part of that is an adjustment that they need to make in game if, if they aren't uh, if for whatever reason 
they're not able to get the ball down the field, extend plays, or, or they're having issues in that area as they did on, on Sunday night against the 49ers, then do they pivot to something where they are getting the ball out a little bit faster? I mean, you, you kind of saw the 49ers do that early in the game. It looked like Purdy was, you know, trying to take his time a little bit and, and finding his receivers down the field. And um, they weren't able to get into a rhythm. And as the night went on and uh, they finally start putting their first positive yardage plays up they it was because they started to get into a rhythm they started to get the ball out a little bit faster um I'm not saying that the Eagles need to be doing what the 49ers are doing but it's just that I think there needs to be some some flexibility potentially um in, in adjusting and uh trying to take take what works takes what take what is working and it certainly doesn't help that uh, Dallas Goddard has been out for the last several games I think potentially getting him back this upcoming weekend can help Hertz get the ball out in rhythm. He is someone that Hertz clearly trusts quite a bit um, and uh, is usually available sort of in, in those shorter range options for him. So um, I'm, I'm curious to see how his potential return affects Hertz this upcoming weekend in Dallas. Olivia, if I had told you in August, the week after they signed him, that Zach Cunningham was going to miss the 49er game in week 11. And, oh, my God, what a price the Eagles would pay for it. They picked him up off the street. They had signed Nicholas Morrow during the actual offseason. And N'Kobe Dean was going to be their main linebacker this year. Zach Cunningham was a kind of poke and hope guy. But certainly leading in the last game, last uh, the game last week, the, uh, we thought they were going to miss him going in. And after the game, we saw how badly they actually did miss him. How important is the return of Zach Cunningham this week to that Eagle linebacking core? I think it's going to be good just to have options. I mean, it's tough when you have to ride with the same two guys for the majority of the game. I, you know, I know we saw Sidney Brown come in very rarely kind of in this hybrid linebacker role. But aside from that, we saw essentially a ton of uh, Nicholas Morrow and, and Christian Ellis because that was who all that was who they had um, so that this is going to at least give them a little bit of flexibility to rotate some guys which is what they were doing when N'Kobe Dean was healthy and it was Zach Cunningham and, and Nicholas Morrow also you know in there for them at inside linebacker so um, you know it's tough I think Morrow undeniably had a rough game on Sunday but he has been okay for the Eagles this season on the whole um, so it's one of those games that he needs to learn from and kind of flush it. But yeah, I think getting Zach Cunningham back, he has been a, a solid addition for this Eagles defense this this year. Um, I think that will be helpful just again to have some some fresh legs and again like seeing what what can Shaq Leonard do this this week. How uh, ready will he be? He'll have had the week, um, so perhaps he'll be on a little bit of a of a snap count, but. It, it'll be certainly good for the Eagles to have a little bit more depth and just some options at the position to use different guys, depending on, on the matchups that they like. Uh, larger picture on that defense, Olivia. Um, you know, we all, Howie Roseman has done a tremendous job uh, building this roster, this team. But I will say, if you look at it, and some of it's injury related um, with Abonte Maddox and Nicobe Dean, but Bottom line is the Eagles keep adding players, whether it's even Zach Cunningham wasn't here when training camp started yeah. and you got Bradley Roby coming in, in season, Kevin Byard coming in, in season, uh, Shaq Leonard's got to get up, uh, and, and play some this week in three days, um, uh, a prep at some point is it, should it be obvious that yeah, they're having some issues. Um, when you have that many moving parts, um, there's going to be communication issues. Is it as simple as that? Um, I don't know. Honestly, it's uh, it's a good question for the players. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I would not, I can't imagine that it's easy at this point to integrate players, but that's kind of the nature of the league. This is what happens. I think last season, this Eagles team was, blessed honestly to not have to deal with as many injuries and they were bound to regress to some sort of like average uh, in terms of dealing with injuries yeah, across the injuries. board but i'll so, say this let me let yeah. me just jump in real quick it, it, other teams don't do this 
And I think fans like it because you bring in Shaq Leonard, that's a three-time All-Pro. You bring in Kevin Byard, that's a two-time All-Pro. They're obviously not those players. Others, as you mentioned, everybody's got injuries. Most other places, they go to the next man up. Man up. And they say, all right, let's sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the Eagles seem to be in love with this. I call it the mercenary market. And you know, people are talking about Endomic and Sue coming back. I'm like, what are they gonna cut turn over the whole roster after one loss? Did they do that too much and get too enamored? Joe Banner used to call it the big name trap. Um, big name, big name, instead of just going, you know what? Like you said, Nick Morrow had a bad game, but he, he had been playing well. Why push the panic button? Yeah, I don't think that they should say Nick Morrow should never play another snap. I think it's just it, it is good for them to have options and depth at a position where they have dealt with and currently are dealing with injuries. Um, so that's how I view it. I think safety, I view, I view safety as a little bit different than their situation is in, inside linebacker because they were in camp with like kind of a a dubious safety situation. You had Terrell Edmonds, you had Justin Evans, Reed Blankenship looking like he had secured the one of the starting roles. But then going into week one, we were like, I don't really know who's going to start alongside Reed Blankenship at safety. Um, and, and Justin Evans emerges as that guy. He quickly gets gets injured. Terrell Edmonds gets, Edmonds gets thrust into the spotlight and uh, it, he just it can't, uh, suffice, I suppose. So um, it's a balance of, you know, how long is the leash and how long do we allow these guys to, to, you know, just to try them out and, and see if they can be starting caliber, uh, you know, at their positions. And in this case, I, it's the Eagles didn't seem to believe that Terrell Edmonds was a starter. And so they, they moved him to see if they, and acquired another starter. So um, I think it's always, it should always be a case by case basis. Um, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, whoever's at least available on the free agent market in this moment, um, you know, it, there's probably a reason <laughs> and that they're not necessarily going to come in and be this like, uh, you know, Chuck Leonard probably definitely is not the player right now that he was at the beginning of his career. I don't think anyone should expect that, but it, you know, What's the worst that could possibly happen? So I think there, there's a difference between, you know, this this position got depleted throughout the season and here we are. We're not super happy with the depth guys who are depth guys at the end of the day. They're not starters. If they were starters, they'd be starters. Mm -hmm. um, or, or you know, it's it's a uh, there's a difference between that and maybe coming into the season not feeling totally secure in who the starters are, which it's kind of I feel like what the situation was at safety. All right, Libby, I got to come. First of all, I need you to be an objective third party here because I know how Johnny Mack would answer these questions. But I need <laughs> you to be an objective third party. Uh, a couple questions lead to a third question. Number one, this week's game against the Cowboys, getting off to a quick start, more than any other game, less than any other game, eh, just another game. How important is a quick start in this game? Um, it's important because that's something that the Eagles have struggled to do this season. So I think it's important that they do that. I would say it's even more important that they sustain a quick start or at least, you know, they, it, I mean, this past week against the 49ers, we, the Eagles did get off to a pretty quick start. They sputtered twice in the red zone, which is, you know, at the end of the day, that's where it matters. And after that, they weren't able to maintain any sort of momentum whatsoever. So um, it's not just about starting strong. It's about continuing to maintain that and to be able to turn the momentum when you need to. And I think the defense certainly didn't help. They didn't make any plays throughout the game. I mean, we saw San Francisco continually make plays throughout the game on defense and um, force the Eagles offense off the field. Um, so that's, uh, I think it's, it's more than just starting strong. You got to be able to maintain that throughout the game. All right. So here's my question. Number two, these matchups, tell me which one you feel stronger about from an Eagles advantage position, 
Eagles offense against the Cowboy defense. Cowboy offense against the Eagle defense. Where does the where do the Eagles have the bigger advantage? Whew. Um, I mean, it's tough. This is a a good team. You know, I'll always I'll always take just in general the Eagles trenches, um, both offensively and defensively. I think the Eagles defensive line has hit a little bit of a plateau, so I'm very eager to see what happens in this upcoming game, both kind of in the interior and on the edges. Um, so that's, but that, you know, I'll always take, I think the, the defensive line over this Cowboys offensive okay. line. And maybe you're not, uh, understanding my question. Where do the Eagles have a bigger advantage, their offense against the Cowboy defense or their defense against the Cowboy offense, which of those two matchups do the Eagles have a better advantage in? Um, I don't, I think I, I more so look at it as like positionally than I think one has the, ah, you don't want to answer my question. Just say <laughs> stupid question, Jody, move on. Here's the reason I was asking the question because okay. it's a stupid I, I, question, Jody. Move yeah, on. I know. That's I what I knew. Mick Mullen would say. No, here's, here's the point I was trying to make. I think the Eagles offense against the Cowboy defense is more advantageous than the Cowboy offense against the Eagles defense. The Eagles defense is not playing well right now. Uh, yeah, I, well, I would Evans always take the Eagles somebody. offense. You would always take yeah. the Eagle offense. Then here's the question. They go out for the coin flip. They flip it. The Philadelphia no, Eagles no, win. No, no, no. What should they do? No, say, no, no. give me the ball. Give me the ball. They will no. not. They will say, we will defer. We will give it to the Cowboys first. So when the Eagles, when the Cowboys go down the field and CeeDee Lamb has four grabs, for 62 yards, including a touchdown. Just remember, you already are first. They should have taken the ball. Uh, it, uh, yeah, full disclosure, uh, Olivia. Jody loves uh, – he wants people to take the ball at the start. That, that it, is come absolutely out. positively not true. I'm going to defend myself here. <laughs> the fact that the Eagles do it out of rote, it doesn't matter. The sky could be falling. Chicken Little should be say would be could be on the sidelines going, take the ball, take the ball, take the ball. Doesn't matter. The Eagles just automatically say, we'll defer. And I think there are certain weeks with the matchup taken into consideration where you say, you know, it's better that we start with the ball. We need to establish the fact that we're going to stick it down their throat. We're going to go. Down. That's my that's my big bugaboo. Is that yeah. there's no thought that's in, for crappy no thought teams. in it whatsoever. That's for crappy teams. Uh, crappy teams have to think that way. The Eagles think they're really good. <laughs> now, sometimes the Eagles might have a little too much hubris, Olivia, and think they're too good. Like this week, I say, you know, they're going to put Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata on an island because they always do because they're really good. And they say, all right, go get them. Nick Bosa, Micah Park, doesn't matter. Lane. Go get them. Sometimes I think there's a little bit, to, there should be a little bit to be malleable. But this is not the week. The 49ers expressed it. They ended, they sandwiched intermission. They scored a touchdown at the end of the second quarter. And they came out and got the ball in the third quarter because they deferred and they scored another touchdown. And they won the game. That's what you're trying to do when you defer. So I don't think that's a good week to bring it up. Come on, Johnny Mac, you watched that game last week. That's the reason the 49ers won the game, because they scored oh, at the end of the first half. They scored that at didn't the hurt. start of the second half. Oh, my God. That, the Eagles had no freaking chance after that. that. Didn't Come on. Hurt. They got dominated from, uh, uh, from the first second of the second quarter. That's when the game started, was the first welcome, second of the second welcome, quarter. They're uh, on. By the way, welcome to our arguing. That didn't help, Jody. Anyway, it, all right. Was last one for from me. Make sure you follow Olivia on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Last name first. Is it right? I said this last time. Is it Reiner or Rainer? It is Reiner. Yes. It is You're Reiner. First, All right. Correct. At Reiner Olivia. So last name first, first name last uh, on Twitter X. Uh, reader at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, does a tremendous job first season covering the team with all our friends down there, Mike Sealski, Marcus Hayes, David Murphy, blah, blah. You got Jeff McLean, EJ Smith, Josh Tolentino. So they got an army covering the Eagles and Olivia does it uh, as good as anybody. Um, when we talk about the Cowboys, we talk about Micah Parsons. Um, he can wreck a game. 
Um, and I kind of just alluded to it. Do you just say, Lane, it's up to you, buddy. He just did it against Nick Bosa. There's one guy who you can say didn't play poorly. If there is one guy against the 49ers, it's Lane Johnson. Um, and you just say, normal business as usual. So I was talking about that hubris the Eagles occasionally have. Do you change anything? Because you have to stop Micah Parsons. I think you, in this scenario, yeah, you've got to trust your tackles, but you also have to acknowledge that Micah Parsons will line up everywhere. <laughs> it's not just going to be the tackles that have to deal with him. The guards are going to have to deal with him too, I'm sure. Um, you know, Jason Kelsey is going to have to help out in some areas too. So I think it's a matter more so of communication and um, just knowing, you know, how that the line needs to kind of adjust in the moment. Um, but yeah, if, if you, it, it's just, it's a, it's a tricky game because then, you know, if, if you uh, double him, then potentially you're leaving somebody else on block. So there, there needs to be good communication and, and trying to figure out exactly how to approach him. But I, at the end of the day, I think, you know, if he is lined up uh, on the edge, then the tackles have to be able to do that. I, I don't see, I mean, obviously Lane Johnson is coming off of a really, impressive game against Nick Bosa and he continues to to prove uh that he's capable of I mean we we've we've known this about Lane but you know he continues to show that he is capable of going up against the league's top edge rushers and winning those matchups um I think Jordan Mailata at times has had his moments throughout the season but he's also you know incredibly talented and good at what he does too so I I I think again, like I'll always pick the Eagles, uh, the, their line play over you know the, the Dallas over Dallas's are really most op opponents throughout the league, and I don't really see this matchup as anything different. Other than it's in that house, and they've won fourteen games in a row. Roster, roster, <laughs> I like the Eagles too. That place we'll see about on Sunday. Olivia, great stuff. We appreciate much you're hopping in today. Have a safe flight down to Dallas and back. We'll be reading you all weekend. Of course. Thanks, guys. Our pleasure. Thanks, Olivia. Olivia Rainier from uh, the Inquirer. Here with us on Birds 365. All right, Johnny Mac, Johnny Mac, come back. Put a bow on the show. Football Thursday here on Birds 365.